Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian, this is Tech Therapy. Today's video is a comparison of the brand new G3 with micro lens array technology going against last year's champ, the LG G2. Both panels are 65 inches. The LG G2 is very bright and has a heat sink, but the micro lens array of the LG G3 clearly sets it apart from anything that has come before it. Now we've matched the G3 against the S95C QD OLED from this year and last year's A95K as well as this year's sibling LG C3. Why I think this comparison is interesting is many of you are looking at the G2 now that it has fallen in price and we all know that the G3 will not have a micro lens array at 83 inches. So the question we have in this scenario, they're both the same size, they're as close as I could match them considering one is on a wall and one is on a stand. We wanna see if the G3 is a big enough upgrade from last year's G2, especially for those of you that own the G2, but you can also picture buying a G2 perhaps at a larger size. That's always a discussion. If they are close enough, go back last year and grab a G2 at 77 or 83. Anyway, that's the discussion that we're having for today. I'm away with my family on vacation, but I'm still bringing you guys the content. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. All right, guys, let's do it. LG G2 on the left, LG G3 on the right. Both are 65 inches. The G2 is using its gapless wall mount to be flush against the wall. It has a heat sink, is very bright. Going against the LG G3, also 65 inches. It's on a Sanus stand and is about two and a half inches closer to us, thus making it look larger. Also has a heat sink, but also rocks the new MLA micro lens array technology, and is clearly a step up from last year. The question I have and the questions you guys have is how much better is it? And that's why we're here today. Neither panel is calibrated. However, they are both fully broken in. They are also in their most accurate filmmaker mode they're also both in hdr and there is a small portion which is sdr which i will point out it'll be a skiing scene and at the end we'll also be in dolby vision using the new spears and Munsell calibration demo disc Special thanks to Robert and Wendy Zahn of value electronics as we are shooting in their gallery store location in Scarsdale, New York. Please check the description below for all their information and please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Let them know that Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy sent you and they'll take amazing care of you. Now seeing these two compared, they're absolute beasts. The G2 was fantastic last year however it was blindsided by the surprise drop of the s95c qd oled yet still held its own however this year there was no real surprise but the mla technology which they've had for some time was brought to the forefront to their 4k lineup to battle the qd oled which i think it has done very handedly and perhaps in some ways has surpassed it You'll have to be the judge of that yourself when you see them in person, but it did very well against the S95C. Now the question you guys have is how much better is it than last year's G2? Seeing these two together will help you make the decision, should I get a G3 or maybe go last year with a G2 as the prices fall? Now we will not have an 83 inch G3 with MLA technology. We will have an 83 inch G3, which I'm actually gonna order just so I can show you guys how good it is. If it is better than last year's 83 inch G2. Now there was some talk that the G2 panel from last year was actually from the year before. I can confirm or deny that as fact. But I do know that this year we will have a new panel in the 83 inches from what I hear. So that is good to hear. So what you can expect is 20% brighter APL than last year's G2 at 83. But this time of year, it's always important that you can look back to last year. Now, while I'm talking, let me know what you think in the comments between these two. 
For me, the evidence in peak brightness is clear, especially in the whites and the light blues. Is it jaw-droppingly different? Well, those that were in the store at the time, shout out to John Reformato as we're actually using his demo material here. This is some older LG um, HDR demo material, which looks really cool. But John is the calibrator that was there that day and some customers were there and they saw a clear difference in every shot from the G3. To me, I thought some of it was a little subtle, but everyone there agreed the G3 was way ahead. Now, I recently compared the G3 to the C3, and what made that look so different was the camera was really capturing the brighter TV, but it washed it out a bit, making the C3 almost look like it was richer in comparison. Couldn't be farther from the truth. I was just trying to capture the peak brightness of the G3. You can see comparing these two, there is no loss of contrast ratio. They're both stunning. And the C3 also looks fantastic. Now, as we move into this snowier ether here, or snowier uh, demo material here, I should say, the evident differences, or the differences become more evident. As you can see, the whiteness of the snow is pure white. Now, OLEDs always push a bit blue on camera. However, you can see how much brighter the G3 clearly is in this area. Now I've had no issues with them dimming. I've also paused this uh, scene many times. I've had no issues at all. You really have to force these for four to five minutes for them to dim and they are dif dimming for safety with static images. But I don't believe it's ABSL in the sense where it's something that really bothers you doing normal content. Both have amazing motion. They look fantastic. And I believe in one of these scenes, we do go into SDR, but it was very minimal if there was any difference at all between the SDR and HDR, meaning that there was no real clear advantage when you were in either. But you can see here that we are much clearer and brighter on the G3. And I believe this scene here is where we might transition into SDR. And the differences are minimal, meaning that what makes them look different from one another, the brightness on the G3 is still there. Maybe not quite as bright a difference as the HDR section was. But the G3 for me is the early favorite this year. The S95C is right there. What's so funny from a lot of you guys in the comments that perhaps have watched me for the first time is you think I'm some LG fanboy. I got news for you. Last year I was supposedly a Sony fanboy and a Samsung fanboy. Guys, I have no skin in the game. I push for all of them to be as competitive as possible. And when you see real competition, pushing LG, for instance, Samsung pushing them is why you're seeing MLA early. It was supposed to be with the 8K lineup. It is now brought to market sooner. So competition really helps. I am not biased. I could care less which one wins. All I want is for them to push each other and give us the best products possible. But I'm dying to hear what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you think. How different do they look? Now again, the G2 in a couple of these scenes is a little bit of a disadvantage as you see me in the back actually playing the 900C <laughs> from Samsung. So the G3 is not picking up any of that reflection, though it has better reflection handling, at least in those, sorry about those couple scenes, but I was out back there playing video games. Now as we transition over to the Spears and Munsell, Stacy Spears, amazing work as always. This is their new disc. This, however, is 10,000 nits, but it is in Dolby Vision. Now in HDR10, the evidence or the differences are more evident. In Dolby Vision, less so. So I really should have showed you more HDR10, Spears and Munsell, but the time of me filming this, we were in Dolby Vision. I wanted to bring you both. Not that YouTube can do Dolby Vision, but differences will still be evident. But I'll say even at 10,000 nits, in Dolby Vision, the differences were not as different as they are in HDR10. 
but both look fantastic both saturated both very accurate now what's interesting is the g3 out of the box definitely tracked more accurately than the g2 which is why at times they will look different from what our calibrator friends say the g3 is very similar to how a master series looks and they're calibrated in the factory which is pretty cool considering it looked very similar to the a95k just brighter which is again a master series qd oled now you don't see us showing you copywritten material for a reason I'm not going to risk the health of the channel to show you movies sped up or slowed down and if i speed them up and slow them down you're not going to be able to see the true representation anyway the reason why you see the spears and muscle is i can push it to 10,000 nits so you can really see what these tvs can do below a thousand nits they will look exactly the same and most of these comparisons from the same manufacturers the differences will not be something you can see but so far i think mla and the g3 has been a home run they were not first out of the gate the s95c was and i'm telling you the s95c and the g3 for me are neck and neck to me the s95c is an improvement over last year's s95b and you'll see them compared again you'll also see the g3 next week go against the sony z9k i'm going to compare it to everything that value electronics has in their store and you'll also see the s95c going against the brighter leds For me personally, um, I'm away on vacation right now, which is why the audio is probably not great. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona in the desert, but we are having an amazing year as a channel and a community. And I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I've been working really hard at this since CES and the numbers and your guys' comments really do prove that. So I thank you so much, but the year is really just beginning. I filmed this on the weekend where we did literally a um, eight hour back to back live stream. We did about 16, 17 hours of filming all these TVs. Now the reflection handling is not that bad on the G2, it's just that everything on that side is lit up for that one scene. It'll go away in a second, so I apologize for that. But the reflection handling on the G3 is better. Now the whole raised black thing, it's not something I think is something you can perceive by eye. I think it's something you have to measure. You can see the blues are very different here in Dolby Vision, especially in this next scene. You will see a difference in the different, they are set to the same color temperature. But I've had no issues with raised blacks. In order for it to look raised with the sun on it, it has to be directly on the screen. So please don't get too caught up in the whole raised black conversation. That is not an issue in any real content that I have seen. And I've enjoyed these in a very bright rooms. All right, guys, I am Brian, and this is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Tell me what you think. Seeing this, will you now consider buying a G2 or is a G3 for you? All right, guys. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Take care.